number four. Yeah, it has been one of those mornings. I'm not feeling too hot. I'll tell you more about it. Right? But into today's show, we're going to be talking how to make our arrow shoot straight. And I think that's a very good topic, and I'll tell you why we're talking about it here in just a moment. Hi, and welcome to Utah Crossbow Hunter, where in today's show, and I'll just show you why we're talking about this subject. Here we go. It is from Tony McGuire, 4844, on my video, has EC Hunter got back to me, and I can tell you that right now, the answer is no. He's probably feeling a little bit embarrassed about that. So Tony asks, I have found out all arrows do not shoot the same. That is 100% correct. My question is how do I make the ones that don't shoot straight to get them to shoot better? Well, we're going to talk about that. But I do want to say this is not the setup that I wanted to do today. I have a little bit of a stomach bug. And it's kicking my butt. Big time. So I'm going to try and get through this without any issues. I hope. Four takes. Yeah, I don't want to do any more. So with that. Let's just get into it. The best we can. Okay. So. Here's way number one to get your arrows to shoot straight. Now this is if you're building your own arrows. Okay? Building your arrows. And that is called spine indexing. Which basically means, let me show you here. On this particular arrow, it's the penetrator that I use. And you can see the, the index right there. Okay? That is the spine, the spine of the arrow, okay? The spine, the, the stiffest, the stiffer, stiffest portion of your arrow, okay? And you want this spine, okay? Some people will tell you to have the spine down. Some will tell you to have the spine up. That's going to be your preference. Whatever you want to do with that. Um, so, my opinion, this is just, just my opinion, um, the spine index should be up. That's just my opinion. My opinion is that when you, when you shot down the rail, let's say my fingers here are the rail, um, let me, we're just going to use this one here. Let's say the, my spine index on this arrow, and of course this is the fletching that goes down in your rail, okay? So my spine index would be up here. So in my opinion, when it shoots down the rail, okay, it's not doing a lot of this wibble wobble. Okay, it's coming out your, your, uh, um, when you pull the trigger, it's coming out perfectly straight. Okay, so in my opinion, that if you have the spine down, let's say, um, my spine index is down here. So, uh, there's my cocking vein would be down in the rail, okay, down here. So I would flip, of course, imagine this being flipped over to the, to my shooting vein down underneath. In my opinion, it's gonna come out a little bit like this, okay? 
instead of straight. So I, I kind of hope I landed that plane with you on that one. It's kind of hard without having an actual arrow that's a spine index that way, and I don't have any. Okay, let me get that one out of the way. So spine indexing. You can order them that way. You can have them made that way. Um, um, and I'll put some links down below um, to some places, a couple of places that I know of that do the spine indexing when you order the arrows. That is um, straightshooter.com, um, AJ's Custom Arrows, and Wavern. I think Wavern does. I'm not 100% sure, but you can probably ask them if they do spine indexing. Um, oh, wrong. I'm pushing too many buttons here. There we go. That's the one I want. So, spine index is one way of seeing if your arrows are going to shoot straight. Another way is, and I just got this. It's a spine indexing machine. Okay. I have, the only thing I've done with it is put it together and found out that this little, you can probably even tell here. Let me see if I can get it up. This right here is way lower than my um, turning point. Let me get my arrow so I can see that. So I am going to have to, you can see the difference here. That's not going to work. It's not going to work. So what I got to do is I'm going to have to raise this up. What I figured I'm going to have to do in order to do that is I'm going to have to build me a new piece like this to do it with. But this is, this came on eBay. Um, I got on eBay. You know, eBay can be good or it can be bad. In this case, the man, the people who built this or did or didn't do a good job. Um, let me. I forgot to grab it. Let me go grab it real quick. Is this weight? So I can't show you guys anything or do anything until I get the machine itself fixed and ready to go to do the spine indexing. That will be a different video, okay? But this is just the weight that goes on the center. You say this, my fingers, uh, it just goes on the arrow, bends the arrow a little bit, and you just kind of turn it looking for the spine index. Well, that's going to be a whole new video, so I'm not going to get into that right now. But that's there's several spine indexing machines out there. Um, some cheaper, some more expensive, and you got to be really careful looking for them because uh, not all of them do 20 inch arrows. They're mostly set up for. Uh, you know, 30, 31, 32 inch arrows for um, compound bow hunters and um, conventional bow hunters. So, there's a, there's a lot out there. And so I'm not going to get into that right now. Now, another machine that you could get I really don't, I don't know why I call it a machine. It's a spinner. Okay. Spinning your arrows. Okay. So, what you basically, what you do is you take your arrow, fit it in here, and spin it. Normally what I would put on here, I'd put on my um, uh, field tip. Uh, on here, or you can even use your um, broadhead. The broadheads can be um, out of tune, also. So you want to do is you're going to like this is kind of spinning. 
So you're gonna be looking for any wobble along here. So wobble, you don't want, of course. Um, in case you did, I did a video on this a while, while a long white wall, wall, a long time ago, and I just had this. This here, I built myself, set it on here, so I have a backing right here, so I can see any any wobble in my tips with my field tips on there or my um, rod heads. So I built this myself. Um, so looking for a wobble in your um, um, arrows is the number one. If you got a wobble, that arrow is not going to fly straight, regardless of what you do. It is not. Okay, so that arrow can be tossed into the trash can. But before you drop it in the trash can, I would recommend that you take out your insert and your knock. So if you need those for another project or one for backup, you have them. Okay? Okay, so it brings us to another way of uh, checking your arrows. And that is called um, knock tuning. Now, there's a lot of videos out there on knock tuning. I am not an expert in any way at knock tuning. Am I going to try it eventually? Absolutely. What does it hurt? It doesn't hurt anything um, to try and do knock tuning. Now, the thing with knock tuning, okay, I just, I am not an artist at all. My kids will tell you. Dad, don't draw. And what does dad do? He draws. I can't even do a stick figure. Okay, so this is just, again, an example of not, of, uh, of tuning your arrows. Um, basically, I mean, let me just start it this way. This is not tuning. This one here, well, I can't, I'm backwards here on my camera, but that's what you're shooting for. A perfect arrow through your, through your paper into your target. A perfect arrow. Now you might get these like this here. Um, like I said, my drawings aren't good. So you can see right here, this is the tip of your arrow. This is your knock. Okay. So that one is, would be a knock high left. Okay. When it says knock high left, is that your arrow, your um, tip one in here, and your knock one in higher. And this would be the same thing over here, a knock high right. Same thing, your tip one in here. You're not going in here, okay? Like I said, I'm not an expert at drawing. So, you can tell me I'm bad. It won't bother me none. Um, but that's, again, just an example. You're going to have, you could come up with different ways. You, you're, you're going into your target, and you just take a look at them, okay? Your tip enter and your knock entry, is going to tell you a lot. Either your arrow is coming in instead of so I can do this straight. It can come in like this, like this, like this. It can come in in all sorts of directions. Okay, are they bad arrows? No, they're really not. You can still do. Let's see. You can take. Let's say you get six arrows and three of them fly true. When I say true, it would be like your perfect one here. Okay? It would be like that. Those ones, what I would do is put those away. 
just put them away. And do maybe a couple of test runs with them. Put your field tip or your um, broadhead on them. Shoot them a couple of times, then put them away. I wouldn't keep shooting these. Okay. Your other ones, you can still uh, do some target practice with them. They're not going to hurt anything. Um... But just before you go out and hunt, to make sure everything is still good with your primary arrows. Okay? Um, because they're not going to be really off that much, you know, to practice with. They're really not. Now, another thing you can do is if you have a knock machine. Yeah. Uh, you can take these these same arrows and put them on your knock machine and find out where the spine is on these. You can still do that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So you know where your spine is. So let's say, for example, my spine's right here. You know this one's good. Um, if your spine is somewhere else, say up here, there's a couple of things you can do. Now, an, a knock on some arrows, not all arrows, on some arrows can be twisted, which we'll get into that more here in just a moment. But these can be twisted to line up your spine. A lot of the arrows out there you can't do that anymore. It's mostly with the cheaper arrows you can turn your knock. Okay. This particular arrow is a uh, Evo X Center Punch by 10 Point. Uh, these are glued in there. Now, this one here. Let me see if I can get this. Nope. I can't get it out, but some of them, you can pull out the insert here. These are, like, at least, yeah, like, if I can get it in here, uh, you can really tell. It looks like a two-piece knock system. Okay. Um, that's my daughter. Um, but you can... Take a, um, oh, the keypad cleaners, and she's bringing me my phone. What is it? Mama. Mama. Thank you. Okay. Let me take care of this really, really quick. I apologize. There you go. All right. It always happens. Once you get the feeling you're doing something, somebody calls you, somebody sends you a text, something that you need to answer. Yeah. Okay. So back to the, the knock. Like I said, some you can, some you can't. So, let me see, grab my can of uh, keyboard cleaner. And this is going to depend on a lot on your arrows. Okay. So, a pair of pliers. Careful with the pliers. Uh, you can take your can, spray down in here really good. All right, which freezes the glue, which causes it glue to disintegrate, and you can probably pull those out. Again, not all you can. So, in some cases, let me see if this one doesn't. Um, yeah, in some cases, your insert 
will have a hole in it. Okay, so you can take your rod, and I don't recall the size, it's just a small, small rod. You can slide it down in. Breeze, but you gotta remember, here's the key. Don't hold it upside down, up this way to do it. Hold it upside down and spray. Okay? I mean, it's, that's, it's not going to take a lot, but you may have to do this like maybe two or three times. Freeze it, spray it, spray it, spray it, freeze it, and hit it with a hammer. To get them to come out. Is that going to work every time? No. Not at all. So, if you can't get it out, that's where um, shooting the paper, paper tuning, has its advantages. Is it good? Is it bad? It's, it's going to be... Um, different results for different people. But, uh, but spine indexing is going to be the key. Okay. So you can actually, when you talk knock tuning, okay, you take it and you just keep turning your knock with each and every spine, with each and every fletching that's on there. Okay. That's knock tuning. Sometimes that works, sometimes it don't. It may be good, it may be off a little bit on this one, way off on this one, and this one's a disaster. Or this one could be perfectly good, this off a little bit, and this be a disaster. It's just, it's just a matter of the arrow. Okay? Um, but again, you can't, so if you're going to find index and do like one of these arrows, you mark it, and you try and figure out, um, do I need to remove the fletching, put new fletchings on? Do I need to move the knock to make it work? Again, it's going to be um, preference, time. Time is going to be the biggest thing. You want to take your time. So... For example, you have your six arrows, you take them out, and you're able to turn your knock. That's going to be great. That's going to be fantastic. That's the simplest way of doing um, paper tuning by turning your knocks. Simple, quick, and easy. Um, you, I guess you're going to find some is going to fly perfectly straight, some is not. Um, is it the manufacturer trying to get you to buy more arrows? We'll see. I don't know. Um, I really wish they would take the time to spine index all their arrows. I really do. It would make more sense. Because they want their crossbows to shoot really, really straight. And then when you sit there and you play with arrows and they're all over the place and you're trying to sight in, you got one that's shooting up here, one that's shooting down here, one that's shooting over here, and you're, you're chasing the arrows with your scope and you're going, wow, this crossbow sucks. This scope sucks. These arrows suck. So, um... And it could be all of the above, or none of the above. But spine indexing for me is the way to go. And that's why I want to get my machine going here. Machine. Um, whatever you want to call it. Spine, it's spine indexer uh, going here pretty soon. Um, because I do want to play around with it and learn by indexing. 
because I have, oh my gosh, tons of arrows. Tons and tons. So this is, for example, I got a lot of these um, Evo X. Older arrows, it's a good way to learn spine indexing. It's a good way to do it. Or if you don't want to deal with it, you just buy them already spine indexed. I guess I'll put the links to the ones um, that I know. No, I know for sure that straight shooter um, does spine indexing. Go build your arrows to spine indexing. Or you can buy them like this, already spine indexed. I think, yeah, I bought these in 24 inch uh, arrows and I cut them down to 20. I still got some more building to do. Um, but because I got to get, I think, um, I got to get these arrows. I need to get at least, uh, oh, I like to get at least three more of these 480 grain arrows. Because they, uh, I got one. Yeah. And almost two. Now, I know this is going to be really, really hard to see, but you see right here, right there, all it's roughed up. These arrows are pretty difficult to pull out of my target when they're like that. When they're nice and smooth, like this, they're really easy to pull out of the target. And I think these are. I don't know, they're kind of burned, I think, from the speed, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna probably going to, I'm going to take some sandpaper and eventually and sand these down just a little bit, see if that helps any. But I do need to get some more 480 grain uh, arrows. Because elk season's coming, it's quickly coming up. And I got to at least get out one more time with my crossbow to make sure it's setting good. Um, and then I'm going to be spending a little more time at the range with my rifle doing some stuff, but a lot more time out on the trail doing some scouting. So I got to do that. Okay. So. I hope you guys got something out of that. Um, it, uh, why is it my music playing? Let me try, oh, what's going on here? Let me turn it off. Turn it back on, there we go. Now I got some music, and hopefully my music isn't blowing me out. So let me turn it down a little bit, just in case it is. I can go ahead, look at my graphics here and see if I'm getting blown out or not. Um, and then I'll know when I do my, go back and do some editing stuff, then if it is. If it is, I do apologize. Okay, so again, I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, I do thank, uh, Tony McGuire 4844 for the question. I really appreciate it. Um, but there's other, uh, there's other people that have covered this, you know, Death by Bungie, um, Ranch Fairy, um, and I think Grumpy Old Hunter has, has done some videos on it. But yeah, you gotta have straight arrows. You gotta shoot straight. That's the bottom line. No other question about it. So Tony, I hope I land this plane for you. If I didn't, let me know. And I'll see what else I can do. Because like I said, I will be doing some paper tuning. Don't know exactly when don't know uh, my priority is right now is my elk hunt that is my priority so uh, 
with that said i want to thank you guys for watching i appreciate it we didn't make it to the 2000 subscriber mark for my son's birthday but let's still work on that goal of 2000 subscribers um i'd say by my birthday it'd be great but i'm shooting this video a couple days before and and uh, maybe get it up before then. I'm not sure, but I know I'm not going to get 2,000 subscribers before then. I know. But let's work on that. Um, so, I guess I'm going to have some videos coming out more about my when I go out doing my scouting. I'm still not sure about my camera setup. Um, but I'm working on that. Um, so... Yeah, that's what I got for you guys now. Um, and remember, these episodes are dedicated to my son. And thank you for watching Utah Crossbow Hunter.